Okay guys, welcome. Today we're going to talk about finding the best tree and with that we're going to talk about uh, what's called Cruz Call's algorithm. Okay, now the idea behind this is we're going to suppose that a country with n towns wants to construct a network between all towns and not necessarily with separate lines between every pair of towns, right? So we just essentially want all these towns to be connected in some way. Now, we will assume that they don't wanna build direct lines between towns that could be reached otherwise, right? So for example, if we have something like this, we wouldn't bother creating this edge because we could just go this way, right? So that's something that we would avoid. So in graph theory context, they wanna build a minimal connected graph with these nodes, which of course is a tree. Now we know that we're gonna need n minus one edges, but we're gonna assume here that not all edges are equal here, right? Some lines may cost more due to their distance or geography and other factors, right? Now the idea is we wanna find a spanning tree whose total cost is minimal, right? And we're of course, we'll assume that we have costs given to us. Now, of course, it's not practical to look at all possibilities, right? Because for, if we have 10 nodes, the number of labeled trees is 10 to the eighth, which of course is 100 million, right? Because it's n, we saw in the previous video, it's n to the n minus two, so it's 10 to the eighth, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna modify our task a little bit. We wanna find a cycle with n given towns as nodes such that the total cost of constructing its, its edges is minimal. Now, the reason why we're gonna consider a cycle is because now it's possible to delete one edge and still be connected. All right, so you can imagine why this would be important in the context of something like connecting uh, a group of n towns, because for some reason, if one line were to be damaged, we, were, we would still be able to complete sort of the network here. Now, one approach is what we're gonna refer to as what's called the greedy method. All right, we're gonna build the cheapest line, then build the next cheapest line, and we're gonna keep doing this um, until we're done. And of course, along the way, you would ignore any edges that are redundant, okay? Now, eventually you get a cycle, but it's not necessarily the best, right? Because for example, if you were to use the greedy method, you would get this one because the, the, if we assume that uh, construction costs are proportional to distance, well, the shortest distance would be this one. Then the next shortest would be maybe this one or maybe that order is the other way around. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Then the next shortest would be this one, but then we'd have to connect these two, right? Whereas it would have been cheaper to form this network here, right? But again, remember this, which, this is for that modified problem. For a tree, removing a single edge, the greedy method is the best approach, right? But for the, the cycle, just by adding one more edge, you're not, you're not gonna necessarily get the best now, right? So if we just consider this in the context of a tree, we refer to this so-called greedy method as what's called Cruz calls algorithm, right? Is to continually choose the cheapest line until you have your tree, okay? Now the proof of Cruz calls algorithm is the following. We're gonna let G be any tree that's different from our greedy tree that we attained by Kruskal's algorithm F, right? So what we wanna show eventually is we wanna show that G and F really have to be the same thing, right? So we're, we're gonna imagine the process of constructing F and the step when we first pick an edge that is not an edge of G, we're gonna call it E, right? So we're gonna assume that maybe this is some portion of our graph here, I guess I should say, uh, of our two trees. And we're gonna say that we have the first step where it goes different from G. We're gonna say that G connected these two, whereas E connected these two, right? Of course, this is just uh, um, 
just for just for a sort of example sake. Now, if we add E to G, we would of course get a cycle C. Now the cycle is not fully contained in F, right? So it has an edge F that is not an edge of capital F here, right? Right, so of course, why wouldn't we select E? And of course, in this diagram here, what we would have, so if we add E to G, you would get this cycle because now, if we were to add E to G, that would become this edge here, right? Now the cycle, of course, is not fully contained in F because this edge right here is not in F, right? So I can call that F. Now, why wouldn't we select F instead of E? Well, it must be because F would have formed a cycle C prime with the edges of F. And of course it would have, right? Because if we go back to the original drawing, if you were to add this in to the orange, then you'd have this little triangle cycle here, right? But all the previous edges were edges of G. Now, since F is an edge of G, it follows that all edges of C prime are edges of G. And of course, this is impossible because G is a tree, right? So the idea here is that F is not cheaper, the edge F is not cheaper than the edge E. And if you were to continually do this process over and over again, you would eventually get that F is equal to G, right? So of course, that would prove that Kruskal's algorithm is the cheapest way to go. Now, I do wanna spend a minute or so on this graph right here where we want to connect where we want to form a tree right so of course the cheapest way to do this is to looks like we're going to have one and then two and then three and then it looks like four five six seven eight nine ten and 11, and then we have our tree there, right? And of course, you can sort of see that um, you now have a tree here, right? All your nodes are um, connected and there is no cycle here, okay? So that concludes this video on Kruskal's algorithm. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.